moved to North Haven, and like the Good Islander, was very resourceful. Farming, started her own business, successful. And then, like a lot of other Islanders, took a job that no one else wanted at the time, whether it's a school board or local tax assessor, and then ran for Maine Senate, where I had the opportunity to work with her and with her daughter. Um, has three great kids, and it is a great honor to introduce Congresswoman Shelley Pink. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I thought for an engineer you did pretty good there, so I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't complain. You may want to go on the speaking tour. Uh, well, I feel really privileged to be here today with all of you. Uh, nice to see Senator Savage, who I had the privilege to serve with, Senator Rector, who's here today, Dennis Damon, Senator, former Senator as well, who worked really hard on this, and so many others who uh, serve in the legislature, work on these issues, uh, and so many people I, I should stop recognizing right now, because there was, the place is full of great people, and uh, for me, what a privilege to be out of Washington today, uh, back here in the place I love the most, and, and doing something uh, that, that couldn't be more exciting for all of us. Uh, I kind of feel also like I'm at a Thompson family reunion so uh, congratulations really to all of you and uh, and just uh, to be able to be a part of, of this with all of you um, I know that uh, Captain Thompson Frankie Thompson would be very proud to have all of you here today uh, to have his daughter christening the bow uh, I guess Kevin's taking it on the first round yeah anyway so it's a real family affair today um, I I think of it as really such a privilege to represent the islands of North Haven, and Vinyl Haven, and other islands of Penobscot Bay. And uh, I think I can say without hesitation, although there's been some disagreement about this, I am the only member of Congress that has to take a ferry to get home. And I know my daughter had the privilege of saying that when she was Speaker of the House, and that's kind of a rare thing to be able to say to people, you, uh, you really actually do live on an island. I had a moment once in the state legislature when uh, we were discussing some kind of island issue, and Senator Goldway, who represented uh, what she thought of as an island at the time, uh, I got up and said, I'm the only one in this room who actually lives on an island, and she got up and said, no, 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 you can't say that. I live on an island. I said, you know, Mount Desert Island, when you got a bridge, it's just not the same. That's right. I think all of us know that. You know, traveling on a ferry is really a unique way of life. That There are people all over the globe who understand this, but unless you live on an island and your life is basically a, a part of that, um, you don't know what a lifeline this is, what a necessity a ferry is. Um, sometimes a nuisance, once in a while a pleasure. Uh, there's just no other way to see it, but the ferry uh, controls our life on an island. Our life revolves around a ferry. I may have only lived on an island for 40 years, but it gets into your bones the minute you get there. And it is part of your daily life. Your rituals of island life, your logistics, revolve around it. And I'm, I'm speaking to a lot of people who know exactly what I mean, but you know you, you know you have to go somewhere and then you think about, well, can I get a reservation? Okay, I gotta line up the car. Uh, well, maybe I gotta borrow a car to line up. Well, then I gotta move the car in line. Uh, you gotta remember to tell your friends and everybody who's visiting you, you gotta be on time. The ferry leaves. It's not something that waits for you to get down there. When you first start going on the ferry as a new driver, you have to learn how to park on the ferry, or maybe at least learn to let the deckhands tell you what to do when you have gotta park on the ferry. Then you get on the ferry, and there's, uh, which cabin are you going to sit in? You know, who are you getting along with today? Who do you want to talk to? Who maybe don't you want to talk to? Uh, but I have to say, sometimes getting in the wrong cabin at the wrong time has led to unexpected conversations, which is also part of island life, something unique to all of us, that we're, we share this experience. And sometimes you get to sit next to somebody and talk to somebody and hear a story that you never thought you'd hear before. Uh, when you get to the mainland, you've got your day all planned. We all have it planned just down to the second because we don't have that much time and we paid a lot for the ticket to get over there. And there you are sitting in the doctor's waiting room. Everybody else is thinking, oh, I might be late for dinner or something else. You're thinking, am I gonna get out of here in time to get back on that boat? Does he know how important it is? Or when you're driving up Route 1, Everybody kind of knows, all right, I'm in Wiscasset, I got 45 minutes, I'm in Waldeboro, I got 20 minutes. You're clocking every last second. And there is nothing worse than getting right up there and looking, and there it pulled out. <laughs> Even worse, if you know a storm's coming and you think, oh no, it's not going tomorrow either. Because when you want to go home, you want to go home, and your ferry is the only way there. It actually starts the night before, for most of us. 
That's the feeling you really know. You're laying there in bed and you hear the wind start to blow. And you're like, oh no, is the ferry going to go? Is it not going to go? Am I going to make my appointments? Am I going to get off? I really need to get off today. I want to go somewhere. I just need a day off. Uh, that's the misery that keeps you up all night thinking whether or not it'll go. And of course there are some trips you get down there and you go on the boat and you think, oh, should I go? It doesn't look that good. Uh, then you get in the boat and you think, oh, why did I go? You know, the water's sloshing over your car. People who don't ride on ferries don't know what that feels like, but sometimes it's a little bit scary out there. Or I have in my mind, when my three kids were little, uh, and I was on the North Haven Ferry, of course, but it was some day in December and everybody was taking their kid to go see Santa Claus at the Samoset. And the cabin was packed, it was a smaller boat, and each one of those kids got sick. You know, and then the parents were getting sick. And then some mother was taking a kid out because the mother was, you know what I mean, and it was a mess. And it was one of those shared experiences that if you don't live on an island, you don't know how we all help each other out and work those, those kind of days or get through a scary moment on the boat when somebody's sitting there next to you saying, oh, I've been on this boat a hundred times, nothing's going to happen. But you know, we ride that boat because we trust the captain and the crew. And really, part of why we're here today is to honor Captain Thompson, Frankie Thompson, the captain of the ferry for so many years. Um, already a lot has been said, and I can't add that much to it, although I was talking to Bayan early about her dad and, and being a captain and how difficult in many ways that is. And uh, he was totally known as a captain who would make it happen. She was telling me a story uh, that I think I'd heard before about a day when uh, a tiny airy flatbed was on the truck and a couple of people came down with pickup trucks full of alwives and they weren't going to fit on the boat. That's another problem. Will I fit on the boat or not? And he just backed the boat back up, put those two pickup trucks on the back of the flatbed and got everybody home. He didn't mind doing what had to be done to get everybody he could possibly on that boat. And you know, we're also remembering a captain that's kind of unique in somewhat of a past era, a captain who lived on the island, whose family lived on the island. So he was taking precious cargo every day, his friends, his neighbors, his children. Uh, he knew uh, that this was more than just a job. This was how you make your community work. And in some ways, I, uh, I think about the captain and the families of the captain. It's a little bit like a politician because, of course, in small towns, we all second guess everything like, why didn't he go? Why didn't the boat go? I got to get somewhere. Oh, why did the boat go? Should he have been out there? And uh, it's never an easy job. And the captain is the one who has to get up in the middle of the night because the ferry service is how we get to the hospital if there's a medical emergency. So when the ambulance crew and the doctor says the boat's got to go, it doesn't matter what that weather is. The captain gets up, gets dressed, the crew shows up, and he takes whatever risks he thinks are necessary to get that person where they need to be. You know, the only other thing I want to talk about has been mentioned earlier. Fairies just don't happen. I guess we all know that. You know, it, uh, I was reminded by reading about this, and I had forgotten actually that the first vote on this was in 1997. I was lucky enough to be in the Senate in those days, and that was the first vote on this bill to uh, provide some of the bonding for the design of this boat. So you can see how long, we all know, we talk about this, we need a new boat, we gotta have a new boat. Um, the people of Maine voted for that uh, and, and allowed us to have the initial money. But it's always a hard fight to get the money for a ferry. That's just the way it is. A lot of people who don't live on an island or don't live in Rockland or don't understand what it's like have this misguided idea that islands are some kind of tropical paradise. That we have palm trees, that we don't have electricity. It's just a paradise for the rich and only elitists live out there uh, who, who choose somehow to have this life. But you know, you take one trip into the Vinyl Haven Harbor and you see the number of fishing boats. You meet the community, many of you are here today, hard-working people, trades people, school teachers, shopkeepers, you heard it earlier. These are people who represent main values, common sense, caring for each other. These are the kind of communities, if nothing else, we need to preserve, but these are hard-working communities. You know, the other thing that I know many of my colleagues in the legislature have tackled over the years, and Senator Damon as well, is helping people to understand that a ferry is our highway. You know, what happens here when these boats go out the 10 or 12 or 15 miles, uh, or even more to get to Matinicus, is just what happens to people who drive on our state highway system or our public roads. You know, it's no different than a remote community somewhere in the state of Maine that someone hardly ever goes to. But we all agree that the cost should be borne by all of us. That is part of our transportation system and something critical to all of us. On that thought about the funding, you know, I 
am lucky enough to serve in Congress, but I know all too well that Congress has about the lowest approval ratings of anything you can possibly do today, and we don't think much of the federal government most of the time. But it is well worth remembering that 14% of the money came from the state of Maine, and 86% of the money to build this boat this boat that costs $10.3 million is federal money. It comes from the federal ferry fund, it comes from federal transit fund. And the last 5.3 money, the money that really took to push this over the edge, was the stimulus money. You know, we often say, what is that stimulus thing? What did that do for me anyway? Well, the fact is, over half the cost of this, the reason we're really standing here today, was thanks to the $5 million in the stimulus funds. So we might not like it, um, but we're here today. We get to watch the champagne break. We get to bless this boat. We will soon have a new, more efficient, safer, safer faster boat. It will be part of our lives. Um, and it will be part of our transportation safety net. Because everybody in this country, everybody from every part of this country, pooled their money and said, you know what, transportation is important. We're going to have a federal highway system. We're going to have federal funds. And we are going to make sure that everybody gets where they need to go. So thanks to a little bit of money from everybody everywhere else, a community that never could have done this on their, our, their own. None of our islands could build our own boats and do this on our own. And a state that couldn't do this on their own. We're able to stand here today. So I want to congratulate the family of Captain Thompson, Frank Thompson, for being honored here today, to honor all of us about the ferry captains who have served us so well. I want to congratulate the people of Vinyl Haven. Uh, you know, I don't see too many North Haveners out there. What's with that? No, it's Vinyl Haven. Oh, there we go, right there, yeah. No, it's a, it's a proud day for all of us on islands to have this new boat. So congratulations, you finally got the new boat. Thank you, Shelly. Uh, although I appreciate it.